Rosie Hardy here, Hardy's College Garden Plants. Today I'm just going to talk about one of the many bugbears that a lot of people have in horticulture regarding the renaming, reclassification of a lot of plant material. Now unfortunately this is happening and it's due mainly to botanists. It's not their fault. Um, but it doesn't help us as nurserymen and gardeners continually having plants reclassified. But first, if you do enjoy our videos, please do subscribe to the channel. There are a lot of plants out there that over recent years have been reclassified. It started off with Semisifuga becoming Actea, and that one is still a little bit difficult because when you look on the internet and look up Actea, it will tell you that the red berries are poisonous. Whereas the herbaceous, which were Semisifuga, have dry seed capsules and those are not going to be eaten by children or anyone else and they are not poisonous. So sometimes these things are a little bit confusing. It has been a long time since that name change has happened. Remember this is botanical naming. We are not talking about true Latin names on plant material. It is a hodgepodge of all different types and a lot of it is Greek with Latin it is botanical names. Please can we get away from saying Latin names on plants? It isn't. It is botanical naming. Okay, so what's happened recently? Well, a lot of you will know that Michaelmas daisies have had a massive change around and there are something like 11 new categories in there. The biggest one are the Michaelmas daisies themselves. They have become Symphiotrichum, no longer Aster. The way I remember this, because I've got to get it in my head and work out how to realise which are which, there are asters which are still aster. They are big single daisies, mainly northern European varieties and ones that flower from the beginning of the spring right the way through till mid-summer. All of the ones which are Symphiotrichum seem to be Northern American types, but also are day length sensitive. So therefore do not start flowering until the day length has become shorter and that causes that classification. The most recent classifications or reclassifications that have happened have happened to Verbena and to Sedum. Let's start with Verbena. So there are Verbenas that are still verbena. There are verbena that have gone to being glandularia. These two at this end, which are upright and have more of a spiky uh, flower inflorescence at the top, this one is verbena macdougalii and this one is still verbena. Square strems, upright, really tall, very interesting plant. Then you have verbena rigida. These again you get the flower inflorescence which is going up on a slightly taller flower and then it is a ground cover plant. Again that has stayed as verbena. So has verbena bonariensis and all of the plants that are bred from that. The ones that have changed are these ones which are more like your bedding type verbenas and they have gone back to being in the glandularia system. So their flower heads are much more round, they stay as a round uh, flower inflorescence and they don't end up with a long spike of inflorescence on them. So they have all become glandularia. They have tooth leaves as well, they are much lower growing and they are your summer flowering forms. This one is Margaret's memory and is a perennial one, really really beautiful form. So that is glandularia, that is verbena. Then the one which is quite confusing is the sedums. So you have this sedum here and this one is sedum spathulifolium capablanca. Now capablanca is one of those mat forming ones. It flowers in the spring, summer time and this would be one of your archetypal ones that would go on a sedum roof. They are still sedum. So sedum acre and all of those ones are still sedum. The ones which have changed are all of these 
perennial ones that get used in the borders that flower in the autumn. This is how I remember it. It may not be the technical reason why they've all changed, but for me as a gardener, a grower, this is my easiest way of getting it through my head. So these ones are going to flower in the autumn. You have got this wonderful name that they have now become, which is Hylotelephium. And we have Hylotelephium Coca-Cola, which is this lovely little one here, beautiful grey foliage. You can see the flower buds there. This is going to come out and be a really lovely form. And then this one here is Hylotelephium, and I've forgotten the name. I need to go back to the patch. I'm just going to double check that. This lovely one here is Hylotelephium lidocensi. And again, it's a dwarfer form, got its flower heads here, lovely purple tone to the foliage, and it's a really good front of border type. I really must remember to bring the labels with me next time, or just go with my gut, and I was correct, Coca-Cola lidocensi, and this beautiful one here, which is Capablanca. Sedum Hylotelephium. So all of these name changes really don't affect you as a gardener too much. The reason behind that is you will still probably call it the grey leafed sedum at the bottom or your little tiny sedum at the front of the border. That is absolutely fine. The reason why you need to note in the back of your head or jot it down somewhere the fact that these name changes have happened is when you go to search for them online because a lot of growers will change the names. We as growers and exhibitors at RHS shows and other shows have to keep up with nomenclature and we have to put the correct name onto our plants otherwise we get marked down. This actually doesn't help sometimes because you will change your naming and then occasionally they get changed back which means you've printed all your labels and you've got it all on the computer. Not helpful for us as growers. There are certain plant names which have been changed and one or two of them we are finding very, very difficult as nursery people to actually change because if we change Gora to Oenothera, no one is going to know what on earth we are on about. Sometimes what we will do in that case is we will put both names on the label. And we do do that with a lot of plant material on our website. We will give you the old name so when you search for the old name, you will get the plant that you are wanting and then you will be fine. Hope this makes sense to everyone. Thank you very much for listening and please do subscribe.